Welcome to another Java tutorial. We've only been doing output at this point. Now we need to do some input to make things more interesting. So let's do a new class. We're looking at figure 2.7. Again, we'll need a main interface. This is on page 47. Again, it's figure 2.7. Class figure 0207 is actually class addition. We need to import some libraries to do input. It's called java.util.scanner. So now we just type in the code as in the book. Okay, system.in is the standard console input module. And we're naming it input. Its class is called scanner from the Java util library. Now we're going to create some variables. Okay, this just reserves space to hold some numbers. We have to put numbers in a spot in memory. Uh, these variables reserves that spot in memory for us. It's important to add a space after the colon, otherwise, you're going to be entering your number right at the colon, so it's a little bit harder to see. It's a little bit harder for users to notice that. So we're taking the user input and putting it into the variable number one. And we're getting an integer value. Int means integer. And for Java, this means it's a 32-bit value. This means that the largest value is going to be about 2 billion. And you can figure this out by doing 2 to the power of 31. Whenever possible, if we know the value is going to be integer, we prefer to use int rather than a float because the integer value is more precise and has more digits of precision than floating point. And we're going to store the second input value into number two. And we want to print this value out after we calculate it. Notice that when you type things in, the editor will jump around for you. So as soon as I hit comma, it was going to replace args with whatever I type in. So there's a lot of code here. And the best way to look at this code is to set a breakpoint. And we'll run this in debug mode. And we want to use the debug perspective. So now the program stopped on the first line, which is going to create our input class. And we'd like to step over this instruction. And notice that the shortcut is F6. It doesn't stop on these variable declarations because it's just declaring the variable. It's not actually doing any work. It's just reserving space. However, if I said number one equals zero, it would stop here. Okay, now if I do F6, step over this instruction, it prints out enter first integer. Now we're going to try to get some input. So I'm going to hit F6, step over this. And we need to click into the console to enter our number. So I'm going to enter 45 and enter. So now it's stopped on the next line. Hit F6 again. It prints out the second prompt. We can't enter anything yet because it's stopped here. 
we need to execute this statement, so F6. Now we can enter something here. And we'll put in 32. Enter. And if there was a problem with this program, we can look at the variables. We see that number 1 is equal to 45, number 2 is equal to 32. Sum has not been initialized yet, so it's not showing up in this list. So let's press F6 again. We can resize our views. Now we can see that sum exists and it has the value 77. And let's execute the last statement. F6. And it prints out sum is 77. So percent %d is something new. Percent %d means to print an integer. And it points to sum, which holds the value of 77, and it passes 77 into this printf function so that I can print the integer. And if we execute one more line, it, this program should terminate. It has not terminated. We just press run, and it'll terminate. Once you're finished debugging, you'll be in the debug perspective. To clean this up, you want to hit the Java perspective, and you can go on with your code as before. And that completes this lesson. Please understand all this code before going on to the next lesson.